سو so, مرحبا بالجميع شكرا انكم هون بكمان ويبينار تاع بي ام اكس كثير بنقدر انكم معنا هاي الجمعه معنا هشام داوود من لوس انجلوس هو موسيقي ماركتينج ستراتيجيست ارتست ادوكيتر كيف بدي اكتبها هاي بالعربي ارتست ادوكيتر مش عارف بس انتم فاهمين علي اشتغل مع اسامي كثير كبيره بال بعالم الموسيقى ك براند سبيشالست و ديجيتال ماركتينج مانجر عمليا هاي الاسبوع رح نحكي على كيف انه انت كفنان مستقل تقدر تبني جمهور وفان بيس عن طريق الانترنت وانه كيف بدك تركز يعني كيف بتبلش بواحد ومن هناك الاشي بكبر ونتأمل انه يكون عندنا بنهاية الويبينار يكون في الات او ادوات بايدين الفنانين اللي بيقدروا يستغلوها وعشان يبنوا الفان بيس تاعن ويستفيدوا من الموضوع. اوكي سو اي ديد ذات ان عربيك Do you want to do your own? Like, do you want to introduce yourself? Just say a few words about yourself, um, and then we can dive into what we're going to do today. Sure. Yeah, sure. So, hello, everyone. Marhaba. Uh, if you were at the last PMX um, workshop, you might remember my face. Uh, if not, uh, good to see you for the first time here. Uh, that is the power of the internet. I can be in LA and you guys can be over there. We can still have a conversation. Uh, yeah, my name is Hisham. Uh, I am uh, obviously Palestinian, but American born. Uh, and I've been very fortunate to be working in the music industry for like, oh my God, what is this now? Like 12, 13 years, something like that. Uh, I began as a musician, as you can see, still am a musician, thankfully. Uh, but right, right away, I just knew that there's so much more to this than making music. <laughs> There's so much more than talent, skill, uh, abilities. I mean, I, I saw that right away. So I didn't want to be uh, ignorant of the music business. So I started taking music business classes in college. Uh, and only, I only took a few before I realized quickly, it's not only ability and talent. It's not only just education. It really is a lot about positioning and like just getting involved immediately right away and starting to do things on your own. So I started interning for, for different artists uh, and I'm from San Francisco and I kind of came up right around the time of social media and digital marketing. Yeah. Uh, very lucky, <laughs> very lucky in that regard. So I, I quickly learned back in 2010 that like digital marketing, you know, at the time I was doing MySpace marketing, that's how far back I go, um, was going to be a very, very important thing. And I, I just told myself from the beginning, if there's any other skill I would learn besides making the music is how to market the music before anything. Uh, and I spent the last yeah decade doing that uh, for other artists. And only now, in the last couple of months, uh, right around when the pandemic started, I began um, taking my own music seriously again. Uh, yeah. So now I real everything has come full circle today. Uh, I'm a musician. I'm an artist. I produce music. I compose scores and whatnot. I still work with big artists marketing their stuff, but then I work with lots of artists like you, uh, telling them how to market their stuff and do brand strategy. But now th the only thing that's different is that now, finally, I'm an artist too. I'm no longer uh, just telling you what to do as the marketing guy. I'm an artist too. I'm doing it right along with you. So that's where I am today. Yeah, it's actually, I think you, you're in this very, very, very rare position where you actually, like, because I met a lot of people in the music industry who are educators um, and they know the in and outs of like what you need to do to build your fan base and all that and like, you know, take your brand to the next level. But like 95% of them, they're not actually like, they did maybe like, you know, been artists for like a while, but they, it's not their main thing. But with you, it's like you're one of those very, very rare people who actually very successful artists and at the same time, like have, you know, know the in and outs of like branding yourself and building your brand and fan base and all that. So it's like, mm -hmm. it's, Amazing to have you here. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But again, you know what? I got to say, like, I don't think, I don't, and I hope I'm not going to be so rare. I really think all artists that come up nowadays, you're going to see a lot more people like me. Uh, yeah. Number one, I think because of the, the abundance of, of information that's available, uh, a lot of power can go back into the hands of artists nowadays. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think you, I don't think artists need to really 
give up so much of their business to other people when they can do a lot of these things themselves. True. And But I will also say it comes down to interest. Uh, yeah. To me, the music business and the music industry, I mean, music business, they're almost like two different things. There's music, ah, business, damn it, damn it. <laughs> Most people think about business, I don't want to get a job and kind of thing. But to me, like, there's so much opportunity, not just to make money and whatnot, but just, just to get involved. Like if I walk into a room and someone says, oh, this is Isham, he's a musician. I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, fine. Oh, this is Isham, he's a marketing guy. All right, fine, sure, why not? But to me, like it's, it's all one thing, man. It's, 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 it's an opportunity to get so involved because the industry is so wide and you can really use, you can flex so many different talents. And to me, I wouldn't be fulfilled if I just did one thing. That's why I do like three, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Totally. That's amazing, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, it is the golden age of being an independent musician or in general, I think like with, with the internet today and everything going around with all the information being out there, it's, I think we're living like in a very, very good era of, you know, being a musician. Uh, like maybe I think it's the best. It's even better than when it was in the like eighties or seventies where you had all those, big record deals um because like yeah then like there was like big record deals that are not offered today but maybe it's like we're off subject a bit but um today you have more ways and opportunities to connect with your fans that you didn't had before it's like mm -hmm. it's amazing but more importantly about why I really believe in my heart that this is the absolute best time ever, uh, especially if it depends on what you're doing and, and what, what your goals are and what success is to you. I think a lot of people still have this, the residue, the remnants uh, of the old industry of like, get this record deal, right? Yeah. Get on the radio. And all of a sudden you're this big superstar. Like if, you, if, if you're looking for fame, that's, that's almost like a lost pursuit. Like, good luck. But if you want to make a living, as in you wake up every day and you live and you focus on this stuff and then the culture of music around you and other people who are creative like you and care about music a lot, not just the people who make it, but other professionals in the scene, there's never been a better time. You don't have to be in the 1% of like amazing. In the old, in the good, in the good old days, you had to be like incredible, like amazing for someone to take a chance on you in the form of a record label who's going to give yeah. you probably a shitty deal anyway, where you're sure. not really going to be making that much money or you're going to be owing them money. And you have maybe yes. like a quick spurt and then you're gone. But in terms of living a lifestyle around creativity and building relationships, which we're going to talk about today with people all over the world who support you, okay? There's never been a better time. And the word fan, I really encourage everyone listening now to just reevaluate that word fan, okay? If you break down what a fan is, it's short for something else. It's short for the word fanatic. You know, mm -hmm. if you just Google fanatic, it means someone who's crazy about you, which is really a re uh, residue from the old industry, right? Back in the old days, when you had these giant rock stars, you would see these fanatics in the front. Oh my God, I love you, lining up <laughs> for so long. People crazy about them, right? But not everyone is fanatical about you. Some people just support you. That's it, yeah. you know? And I think if you have enough of those supporters on a regular basis, that's more than enough to sustain a living and eventually to, to scale it and to grow. Because once you reach a certain point, it's what we call it tips over. And then the momentum's really rolling now at that point. And even today's streaming econo uh, economics, like, look, I know a lot of people complain about streaming, but... Mm -hmm. Back, back in the prior days, if you were selling physical CDs, your label took a big chunk, you know, all these people took a big chunk. And then even as far back as like eight years ago, when you were selling downloads, if someone bought your song once, that's it. They just bought it. But now people keep listening to your music over and over again. There's playlists. The artists are making, you know, decent artists can make anywhere between like $4,000, $10,000 a month. Some are making $20,000 a month. You know, from this, granted, if you're a really big artist and you have a label, they get a cut, a manager, they get a cut, but there are a lot of independent artists like you and I, who are, who are pretty much completely independent, who can get good streaming numbers and make a good living on just streaming, just passive yeah. income, just streaming. Yeah. And once the world becomes a thing again, we can tour, <laughs> play live, sell merch, <laughs> et cetera. So I, no, I think now is a fantastic time, the best time ever to be a creator. Oh, totally, yeah. And it's like, there's so many artists out there that they're like making 
okay, maybe, like maybe making $100,000 a year, which is sounds a lot, but trust me, it's not. Because like, there's a lot of people making that amount of money. And it's just, not just like, you know, being the streaming. Like today you have, as a musician and using the internet, you have a way like, you know, to write music for commercials, write music for music libraries. Like there's, I know people in the music library business that they are making $30,000 a month easily just from music. That's like you, a lot of people heard, they don't know who wrote that music. They're probably watching, you know, Desperate Housewives of Hollywood or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're listening to their music without knowing. And still, like, they don't need to be, like, famous and walk down the street and people, like, taking pictures with them because that's a different thing. Yeah, but I mean, you, it's you, you, definitely you, you can. Very, two important points right there. I, I think you said, you know, make music, et cetera. But, like, I just want people to have perspective here. Just to make music so accessibly right now is incredible. Right. If you were like True. longing for the old days, you realize you had to pay like thousands of dollars <laughs> just to like get in the studio. Yeah. Make music. yeah. Like, I mean, I have every instrument I can think of here on this keyboard, on the software. I have this piano. I have all these things. I'm, I'm at home right now mm -hmm. and I'm making this music. That's incredible. Uh, and yeah. number two, it's another thing to really think about. Again, if you're an early artist, like you've been making music for a couple of years and you're getting involved now and you're taking it seriously now, I just really, I want you to sit down and just ask yourself, like, what do I really want here? Because I think a lot of people are attracted, a lot of personality types, myself included, I was one of them, are attracted by this idea of, ooh, look, I'm on stage, I'm performing, cool. I'm being yeah. admired, I have yeah. followers, it's fun i can make money doing this or go to my job and get paid where i'm bored obviously you'd mm -hmm. rather do this okay but i think at a certain point hopefully many people mature and they realize there's so many other ways to make money that you may not even know about i know lots of artists who have artist identities like I, we all know them as one thing but they're yeah. making art they're making their money by being themselves as producers getting like license license opportunities yeah. and stuff like that you yeah. know it's not sexy ways of doing it, but hey, they don't have to work a job they hate. They wake up every morning, work on their craft, and then occasionally go out and perform and people know them. But for right. the most part, they're making their money in ways you don't even, you can't even see, which is very interesting. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, yeah, so that's what we're trying to do with, uh, with these webinars. Um, one of our main goals is like to uh, teach or expose Palestinian artists to this industry in a way where they can utilize the tools that they have and actually start making a living out of their music. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, cool. So we can, we, we're gonna try like now talk about specific subject, which is like dive into building your fan base um, over the internet. Um, we can do that or if you want, we can start with like questions how do you want to navigate I want to start with, if there are any questions let's just start here again like if you guys were at the last workshop you remember it was like a lecture which is yeah. fine i guess i can do it again <laughs> uh but no i want to hear from people i don't want to just talk about things people i think want to hear like if people have questions let's address them like right out the gate i want to have a conversation from people who are thinking about certain things so if you have a question either put it in the, the chat box i'm assuming right here right yeah Please, like we yeah, will we answer that. If, you, if you have a specific question ask it now um, or you can other... raise your hand and you can like you can talk um in the meantime i'm just pulling up some uh some documents here that i had ready right. oh that cool. you guys well actually maybe before while people are asking questions i'll just put up one of them real quick Okay. Uh, I'm going to do the screen share. Am I allowed to? Yeah, sweet. All right. One thing right off the bat I wanted to talk about, guys, before we start this off. And again, if you're at my, if you're at my workshop uh, in February, I don't, don't worry. I'm not going to rehash all this. Uh, mm -hmm. But I do just want to mention one thing. Uh, if we're talking traditional artist route, okay, the idea that you are the artist caricature, you went from making music to producing the music and now you are the artist identity, right? There's this brand that you've built and we'll talk about that shortly. But remember that there is a journey. No one just starts from like zero and goes to a hundred. They have to go through a certain journey. So people usually start here as a user in most cases of a platform like Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, or maybe they're watching yeah, a TV show and they, they hear your music yeah. or something like that. The first stage is that they become aware of you, okay? 
And at a certain point, they get to know you, whether they, they listen to the music itself or go in your Spotify catalog and learn more about your music, okay? And then they learn to like and love you depending on their emotional response. Some, you know, again, we all know music is subjective. Some people love your stuff, some people might find it whatever. For whatever reason, people might really gravitate towards you, especially once they go off of Spotify, off of Apple Music, and they click on Instagram, and they click on your website and see whatever it is out there, and then they become a customer of yours. Whether it's buying merch, buying music, uh, donating, to you, by the way, which we're seeing a lot of, especially now in the wake of this pandemic, et cetera. So I just want to be very clear, like there is a journey when it comes to building an audience base, okay, a fan base, if you will. They have to kind of go through this and not everyone goes through the same, uh, in the same rate. Not everyone goes through the, at the same pace, not as fast or as slow, you know? So I want to be very clear about that. And then the last thing I want to show you guys real quickly, when it comes to uh, how this all works is that they go through something here that we just call the, 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 the marketing funnel effectively. So the reason why it's called the funnel is because some people start here and leave. Some people get to here and they leave and that's okay. But the whole point as you, as a marketer for your music is that you have to bring them down this, uh, this funnel ultimately to get them here. And you need to put all the things in place to, in order to do that. You can't just have your music on SoundCloud or Spotify and expect this all to happen. There is what we call an ecosystem, a marketing ecosystem that has to exist that you bring people down. And this, all this means, guys, is that they just tell their friends. <laughs> they just tell the friends. If you see people tagging their friends on your post, this is part of advocacy, okay? If you see people uh, commenting and recommending you to other people in the real world, that's part of this as well. So I just want to start with that, and hopefully that's going to get people's gears turning and questions going. But everything we do as music marketers and even artist marketers, as, as artists ourselves, is, is focused on this. We ultimately want them to spend money somehow, <laughs> whether directly yeah. supporting us or maybe indirectly, right? Like listening to us on Spotify over and over again to the mm -hmm. point we can keep accruing those streams. So I just want to start with that. I would love to uh, maybe later in this conversation dive into the subject of um, 8020, uh, okay. where like as an artist or in general, I, I think it's like applies for any business where you make 80% of your income from 20% of your customers. Or, yeah, the Pareto principle, as it's known. Yeah, uh, yeah we're not even just like, you're right, because 80-20 applies to everything. It's almost a very fascinating phenomenon. If you've not looked this up, just Google the 80-20 rule or the Pareto principle, and you'll be stunned as to how much it applies to everything, like a lot of things. Uh, but the basic gist is exactly what Abba just said, it, that 80% of your results can only come from 20% uh, of your of your efforts, uh, yeah. if you apply it to music marketing, like maybe eighty percent of your yearly revenue might come from twenty percent of people who just love you, who really love you, want to support you. You don't have to get everyone, you know. So in marketing terms, we we look at this as like you might have. Let's just use the numbers that are easy: a hundred thousand, you know, um, followers on on um, on Instagram, but maybe only I don't know two thousand people on your email list. Right. And those people yeah. keep buying your merch. Those people keep telling their friends. Those people keep going to your shows. And you don't need all 100,000 people. You just need only a certain percentage and a small percentage of them um, to support you, to really give you the majority of your, of your results there. So you're not trying to win over everybody, but you want to yeah. find those few who really, really care. Cool. Um, we have two interesting questions. Uh, we can start with the first one, which is, in the chat, do you see the chat? Can you see the question? Is it? Oh uh, yeah. So it's the um, as a beginner artist. The question is uh, uh, came to Facebook as a beginner artist. How can should I use the internet to find my first fans, and how should I connect with them? Hmm. Uh, let's see. How should I use the internet? Well. I'm going to just start with the, the basics here. Of course, the first and most important thing is get your music heard, Spotify, yeah. SoundCloud, et cetera. Don't just do SoundCloud. You got to go where the audience is. Okay. Mm -hmm. The biggest platforms now are Spotify, Apple Music. And if you use any decent distributor, you're going to get your music on all of those places. Okay. Sure. The second step there is positioning that music so that people can actually hear it <laughs> beyond, your, beyond your friends and family. So there are platforms like Submit Hub that I found a lot of success with, uh, S-U-B-M-I-T-H-U-B.com. If you want to put a link in there or something, we can even walk through it later. Uh, yeah. That is a place where you can literally reach out to people who run Spotify playlists, YouTube channels, SoundCloud channels, and you get reposts, features, et cetera, but it has to fit you know, their, their style. 
you know? And it's yeah. not always like, is it, is it amazing? It just, does it have the vibe? Does it have a good, mm -hmm. does it have the vibe for their playlists? I've been rejected many times because they say, hey man, great song, not a fit. And that's okay. Yeah. That's totally yeah. fine. So you want to get it in a place where you can at least start positioning it. And then from there, you've got to position yourself to be ready for it. So to give you an, a rough example um, to the person who asked this question here, uh, and you'll kind of see how all this stuff uh, works together. So if I'm going to go just to my own artist, Spotify, to give you an mm -hmm. example of, of how something would typically go. go. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so here's my artist channel. Things are a little different now because yesterday I released a film score uh, to a movie that came out. So things are a little different right now. But let's just say you hear one of these tracks and you go, and someone again, they go, wow, who is this? You click on the about and the first thing, you gotta hook them here. So if you're not putting good photos of you or just like your logo, don't put your logo, put you. People connect with people. They don't connect with like logos and stuff, guys. So be a person, <laughs> number one, and have a biography. Like really try to hook them into what's going on here, okay? Like let them know your story. Give them the loose overview of your, of your story. In my case, mine was, hey, I started off as a musician and like I talked about earlier, I, I lost it because I got too focused on the business side and now I'm back. Uh, and then for up to them, they want to go, all right, I want to connect with this person. Give them opportunities to connect with. Not everyone who uses Twitter uses Instagram. Not everyone who uses Instagram uses Twitter. Give them opportunities to connect with you on all of these. The most popular one, of course, would be Instagram. So right off the bat, to answer your question, you got to get on Instagram. It's the most popular platform for music demographics at the moment. So you click on the Instagram channel and right off the bat, show activity. Don't post once a month. Don't post just flyers. Don't post just logos. Post meaningful stuff. Post conversations. Videos that have your face in them typically do very, very well. Don't just post out now. Post engaging stuff. So if someone goes to your Instagram, they say, man, I don't want to miss out. I don't want to yeah. keep missing out on this good content. Now, normally, I would have my website right here. But right now, again, I had a soundtrack that came out yesterday. Um, but normally, I would, my, my um, Instagram would say, sign up to my mailing list for exclusive content. For exclusive content. You get to my website, which I have. Now, that, now, I've got you off of social media. If you like my music enough, you got off of social media and I brought you here. And here it is. Join the mailing list for exclusive content one more time. And I remind them, hey, you're among the first. I'm very honest. You're among the first people. I'm a new artist. You're among the first people in my music. I will cherish that. You only get updates and news and special exclusives to you. Okay. And then right down here, guys, I am so surprised this actually works, but I have a donate button. Okay. Nice. And people actually click this. Nice. People actually donate money. And I don't have any merch for sale yet, but people are sending me support financially. People are asking for other things like, hey man, I heard this track, the panorama of you playing piano. Can I, do you have any sheet music? I get this request at least a couple of times a week. Can you give me <laughs> sheet music for sale? I'm like, you know what? I don't, but I just hired someone to, to transpose <laughs> this song so I can sell it on my website. So I'm immediately telling them, hey, get off social media, get off social media, come here, come hang out with me over here. And what I did yesterday when the score came out, you know, I, I even said, uh, I think I actually have it over here somewhere. I think I have an example of it over here. My first film score. Just to give you an example of what this looked like. Uh, I think I deleted it. But anyway, but the, the actual email said, hey, I have this new score. And as an exclusive to you, thank you for being on my mailing list. You got this video early. So this video doesn't come out until next week. But I gave mm -hmm. them this video yesterday to remind nice. them like, hey, no one, he didn't post this on social media. So you nice. just build that one-to-one -one relationship. And anyone who enters any information here or donates or anything like that, I have email conversations with, I have long conversations with, we build a relationship. Like I actually talk to them and I'm, I'm not too busy for that. <laughs> if someone decided to contact me and express how much they like my music and they want to support me, I will build a friendship with you one fan at a time. So I guess that answer the question broadly, you want to obviously position the music. Then you want to have roads that come back to you roads that come back to you. There is the, the, the freeway, social media, and it's, it's busy. The freeway is busy. There's many cars. It's noisy. Yeah. But then you want to have the back road that comes to you where someone feels like, hey, it's, now it's just you. And you build relationships one person at a time from there. Uh, that's the best broad answer I can really give.
Yeah, that's that's amazing. That's great stuff, man. Um, the second question we have is, what are some challenges in building up your fan base as an Arab um, or building up your fans as an Arab? And Abed, I mean, huh. I'll, I'll also lean to you on this one as well. <laughs> um, but the ones that come to my mind immediately, and it's no different than being, you know, any ethnicity, frankly, is that like the, the biggest language that's spoken across the world is English, obviously. So right off mm -hmm. the bat, if you're only doing things in Arabic, if you're only writing posts in Arabic, if you're only singing in Arabic, if all your, all your themes are only Arabic, you're naturally going to limit the people who you're going to be appealing to. Okay. That's why artists like Shakira, you know, like they, they cross over or any, think of any artist that, oh, like was really big in Latin America. Then they collaborate with an American artist and they sing to broaden the fan base, to have that appeal, to bring them over. So the first challenge I can really think of immediately is just the language barrier, right? Mm -hmm. If you're, if you're only speaking one language or you're only posting, you're just going to appeal to other people. How you alleviate that uh, number one is if it, in your social media posts, et cetera, post in Arabic, please. But then maybe right beneath posted English, just exactly. to show people that, hey, I'm, I'm broadening exactly. my approach to people. You know, that's exactly. a big one, number one. And then number two is up to you. You know, I know I, I spoke to some uh, Palestinian artists who said, no, 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 no. I only want to sing in Arabic. I only want to do my thing in Arabic. And that's totally fine. But I've always said, hey, man, <laughs> you have a beautiful voice, you know, to any culture. You have really mm -hmm. dope beats to any culture. Have you considered collaborating with an American artist or an English speaking exactly. artist or singing in English or something like that? It's, I always say, don't be too proud, you know, if you want to grow a yeah. fan base, but that's the first challenge. Um, I would say, I mean, I, I want to go back to you. What do you think is another challenge besides just the obvious <laughs> language barrier? So uh, from my experience, well, my band, um, we, we always sang only in Arabic. Um, and it was a thing because like the whole idea of doing like a heavy metal hard rock band uh, started because we wanted to listen to this music in Arabic and we couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, so we started doing it Arabic and we stick with the Arabic thing. Um, I, I found out that it doesn't really matter as long as you can uh, communicate in other languages. You don't have to sing in English. You can keep singing in Arabic. It's totally fine. People love that. People respect you for that. But as long as you can communicate with them over social media, emails, website, whatever, in other language. Cause, and like have your music also. Like if you're going to stick with the Arabic thing or whatever language you choose, make it like translate your lyrics. When you post a song, just a couple of sentences about this song, what it's about. Because people would connect with, the, with your music would love even if they don't understand every uh, word of what you're saying but they would love to you know have a general idea what's the song about um mm -hmm. and like yeah it's i don't think i think it's the yeah the, the main barrier would be like the language in a way that you need to know how to communicate with other people because like if you all your posts are in arabic and all that that's totally fine you can do that but know that you want it's going to be harder for you to break into uh, out outside of the MENA or, you know, the MENA region, basically. It's true. It's true. Um, and, you know, just to give an example, like, there's this um, African, uh, this French-African sister duo named La Nubian. I yeah. don't understand a word they're saying, man. <laughs> I don't know anything that they're saying. But their vibe is so genuine, so sweet, and exactly. so just, like, smooth. I'm listening. I don't care. I've seen them live several times. I still don't know what they're saying. Yeah, <laughs> but like, it also gives it its appeal to me a little bit. But how did I find them? Did I listen to French soul music? No, no. They collaborated with hip hop artists in America, like Talib Kweli, like Mos Def. And I heard yep. like them singing on hooks, on choruses. Mm -hmm. Like, who is this? This is gorgeous. And then I would eventually dive deep into them. I'm like, oh my god, they have their own catalog. This is amazing. Yeah. So yeah. they position themselves with a broader American speaking artist. And that's how I discovered them. And now I'm a fan of theirs. So to, also to answer your question, you know, about building your fans as an Arab, that's, well, I mean, think about it. It's interesting. It's like, are, are you asking that because you're leaning into the Arab side of it? Are, are you, again, are you speaking Arabic? Are you going by, are you speaking with Arabic themes? Or are you just of Arab ethnicity? Like, like me, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm of Arab ethnicity, but I make instrumental music. I mean, like, why should that even really matter? It's still like mm -hmm. my appeal. You know, so I, again, I, mean, I guess I just need more information. Are you singing only in Arabic? Are you being a traditional Arab artist? Are you being a little more global in your approach? Yeah. 
Otherwise, because yeah. if, if it's the latter, if it's the global approach, there's no challenges different, I think, being an Arab than being Mexican or being European or being yeah. anything. Yeah. It's like, don't look at yourself so much in those black and white terms. It's, it's a global music industry now. True. It's like, two, well, there's two things. One is um, language is not actually a barrier when it comes to the music itself, because uh, one of the biggest bands in the world in, in like the, the hard rock is Rammstein and they sing in German you know it's German. like but you you see their videos you see their visuals it's like you get connected to that like they have their own vibe that you get connected to it you don't even need to like know what they're singing about um, but the other the other point that I would like to um, highlight a bit more is the collaboration thing like oh. with today's tools if it's SoundCloud uh, Reddit Twitter like reach out to other people like reach out to, to other musicians in different parts of the world and that's that will like i can't stress enough how important that is because like it will just open you to another market immediately even mm -hmm. if like that artist have i don't know three thousand fans or three thousand likes on his instagram whatever just do you. that <laughs> yeah exactly you know i mean look i mean this is gonna be this is beyond music now but like the yeah. world we're living in now like i think it needs to be rebuilt on collaboration across everything <laughs> not just yeah. music but yeah. think about it the music space back to the beginning of our conversation how we said it's an amazing time because what we're talking about is democratized meaning that like everything is now accessible once upon a time it was not accessible now everything's accessible yeah what is yeah. the bad side of that is that it's very uh, noisy now. There's lots mm -hmm. of people doing things. There's lots of people. So if you think of it like a, like a plane, like a road, okay? Everyone is at, there's so many people who just make music on Ableton and put it on SoundCloud. Okay, great, now you're here. There are so many people here, okay? What's one way to rise above is to take this person, this person, and then go here together. So now their audience is your audience and you're speaking in one voice. You're kind of rising above a little bit, not to mention from a marketing and data standpoint, if I collaborate with an artist, let's just say he has 500,000 uh, followers and I have 200,000 followers, right? And we are both on the same track together. If all 500,000 of his fans listen to that song, I'm the one getting the plays because we're together, we're connected. Yeah. On that, yeah, you know, so from an algorithmic standpoint, like it's helping, but you've got to broaden your audience, man. I mean, there's Definitely. an artist, he's in Amsterdam actually. He contacted me because he heard my stuff on Spotify and he wants to collaborate. And I was looking back at his releases, mm -hmm. I'm like, you do this with everybody, like he just hit me up on Instagram, and I just saw that like, he all his tracks are only collaborations because he's smart. He understands if I get on this guy's playlist, they'll find me. And then exactly. like, that'll help my algorithm. So he sent me some stems. I'm working on a track, I'm in this room now. Uh, we're working on a track now. Um, but man, the name of the game right now, if you want to stop getting lost in the shuffle is to continue to collaborate. You must collaborate yeah. as often as possible and do it in a smart way. Don't do it just with artists that are like you. Who cares? Do it with someone outside your realm. If you're a rapper, find a dubstep producer. You know what I mean? Like yeah. really like change things up at this point. Yeah, totally. Like, it's also, you can, with collaboration today, you can use it for like, for example, I'm just working on a couple of releases right now. I have some woman in China is working on one track doing like some instrument called Guzung, I think, or whatever. It's like the, the Chinese version of the Kanun. I have a, a Egyptian flute player in Cairo working on a track right now. I have someone in Greece working on a track right now. And it's like, it's amazing. Like, I back in the day when you wanted to do that that would take you like maybe three or four months just to start finding the people you know <laughs> today it's like five minutes on the internet oh i like what you're doing hit them up yeah let's do that that's it you know yep i mean it's a simple guys back to positioning because like look in the early stages right now i know this topic is called how to find your fans and whatnot <laughs> but I'm, I'm speaking now as someone who look i know i've been making music all my life but as of this project it's i'm new i'm a new artist i'm brand new okay and while of course i'm i want to grow my audience and grow my fan base i also know that the name of the game right now is to grow relationships and that includes other artists other producers other mixing engineers other mastering engineers other vocalists right now yeah so as as concerned as i am with you know 
building my audience, like I want to collaborate with the producer in Amsterdam. I want to collaborate with a Palestinian artist. My, right now, it's like you got to spread your chips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're just starting out, you want to grow the, the industry side to the business side, your professional audience, you know, of other people who want to collaborate with down the road. And they might know a marketer. They might know a video person. They, the whole point is that the first, man, several years <laughs> of your artist project is just building. If you, I'm yep. sure you've heard this expression now that if the, if the audience has not heard this again, that an overnight success took seven to 10 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, even with me, like I'm seeing early success with my artist projects. It's only two months, two and a half months old. I have like 1.5 million streams. And many people might be like, what? You're a new artist. How'd you get this many streams? Like, do you have any, any, 13 years? I knew for 13 art. years. Like, <laughs> You know, it's a little different than that. So I, I think, again, if your heart is in the right place, by the way, and why you're doing this is for the right reasons, you're going to last. You're going you're gonna to make it and that you're going to make a living from this. But if you're yeah. after the party, after fame, all that stuff right away, you might get that in the beginning, but you're going to burn out pretty quick. Or you might lose your patience, <laughs> you know? But if you're doing it for the right reasons, playing the long game, embracing this as not the party, but this is a lifestyle. Okay. We, yeah. what we do is different than most jobs. Okay. And, and you embrace that. And frankly, that excites you. You're going to be just fine. Just fine. Totally. Um, we have another question. What are the best tools to use to market our music? I think we touched that answer somewhere, um, well, but we can go to... up briefly. Yeah. Um, let me go ahead and show you guys something real quick, just in terms of, okay. So, what are the best tools? You're asking a marketer this. So I always say, you know, well, it depends on what you're going after. Okay, it depends on what you're doing here. So to give an example of a sample marketing uh, project that I'm working on right now, let me just go ahead and share the screen quickly. The first thing is first, who are we speaking to? So this is an example of a marketing campaign I'm working on right now. Before anything, guys, before anything, who is my audience? So this is for a product, by the way. This is, this is for an artist that I'm working with right now. Uh, I won't say who. It's very, very big artist, that's all I'll say. Uh, and then the first thing first, who are we speaking to? These people, great. What more about them? Well, this is their age group. These are the things they're interested in, and this is their lifestyle. Great. How, what's the voice that we're gonna speak to them with? Well, we wanna speak like this, these three companies, okay? Great, that's awesome. What is our marketing timeline? And then what are the goals? What are we trying to achieve? So ask yourself as an artist, what are you trying to achieve? In this case, build a fan base, sell merch, et cetera. And then now you get to the tools. So I'm only bringing this up because I just wanna show you, like you say, what are the tools? But you gotta ask yourself, who am I speaking to? Where are they? <laughs> what platforms do they use? What do they care about? Then you pick the tools you're going after at that point. So, so the best tools to kind of bring this up, actually, I have another slide ready to go here, actually. I'm only going to bring this up, guys, because again, you're speaking to a marketer. So I'm very, very biased. But I really think this applies massively to anyone right now who's trying to build an audience. So I'm going to share my screen one more time here. Here are the tools that I think are the most important ones. You need a website. You still mm -hmm. do. And you don't need to spend a lot of money. You don't mm -hmm. need to spend a lot of time. There are a lot of resources. There's, my favorite one is Banzoogle. So right off the bat, I'm just gonna bring these guys up now. It's like Squarespace or Wix, but specifically for musicians. If you don't have a website, you can get one so cheap and so easy. I think it's like $6 a month. Something really, really cheap to have your own website with domain. You know, this website here, this is built on Banzoogle and they have templates just for musicians. So you need this, number one. First and foremost, you need a website. That's the first tool. And again, it's for the reasons we talked about earlier. You want to get people off of social media. Get them off the freeway. Let them take the exit <laughs> to you. Yeah. And you control the experience, everything. Again, Facebook, Instagram, they, they tell you how many people you can reach. Your website, it doesn't. Uh, and also, it's a place where you can sell. So if you have merchandise, et cetera, you need a place to sell stuff. And also, like Abbott and I were talking about, you need to showcase your other stuff. So Sure, this is, my, this is for my fans, but I have a tab right here called scoring. You know, so let people know, oh, by the way, I didn't know he was a composer for movies and stuff. You gotta have a place to showcase your business to business needs as well. Okay, that's the first tool. You need a website. It's the, the central spoke on the internet. Uh, you need email marketing. 
Okay, again, getting people off of social media and having your own funnel. So MailChimp is a very, very good one to start having there to build that email list. You may have, you know, 500 people on Instagram, but if you only have 80 on your email, that's okay. Those 80 are likely gonna spend money on you. So you need that. You need streaming, okay? Not just SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere. You need to be where everyone is listening to music. So you need a streaming presence, which also, by the way, means you need music, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you need music out there. Oh yeah, I forgot, music. You need music out there. And by the way, guys, you need music regularly. If you're, if you're sitting down on an album right now, get up and cherry pick that thing. In the early stages, don't wait yeah. two years to drop an album and disappear for a year. Singles. Yeah. In my opinion, yeah. maybe, man, every four to six weeks at this point, Those single, credits. single, 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 spread them out get, and, and yeah. work all of them. Try to get all yeah. of those singles on playlists, okay? And maybe yeah. some of those singles are collaborations as well. Then, of yeah. course, social media. See how this is like number four <laughs> from like a marketing standpoint? Social media is very important, guys, but for what we're talking about here, it's almost like not the most important thing. Okay, so yes, social media presence where someone gets off of Spotify and they go to the, the second place they spend all their time, social media, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. And then you need content. This is, this is another webinar, <laughs> but you need content, <laughs> video content. I don't know if you guys can see here, but like I have my camera right here for all the video content I'm producing, whether it's stuff for my music, or my other businesses, et cetera. Yeah. I have my phone here. I mean, I'm always making content to support my stuff. I can't just put out music. I need to tell people mm. why, why should you care about my music? Why should you care about me? Frankly, as well. Uh, yeah. And even on that point, by the way, another quick thing I'll show you guys here is that I don't just post random stuff. I have calendars. I have content That's calendars brilliant. to support all my releases. That's so <laughs> everything in pink is what I call my, my tent pull release. So I try to get at least one of these a week. One, yeah. one thing a week that's like important. And that's always in pink here. And everything else is just to provide support, support around it, you know? I remember you shared that, uh, did, I think you did share it with, uh, with the attendees from the last yes. workshop, right? If you were yeah. at the workshop, you have this template. This is just my, my newer one. And I have one for every release, by the way. Yeah. I, I can't find my other one because I, <laughs> there's, there's more, this is an older one. But yeah, every release has its own calendar. You know, yeah. so I, I try to think ahead when it comes to this. So you never struggle with, you know, what should I post? What should I post? But now you're posting things for a reason. And then you say, okay, great. I need a video of me playing the main melody. I got to go record that, mm -hmm. you know, and then you plan, you plan ahead. Okay. So you need content to, to supply the social media. And if this is okay, I, this isn't a perfect world, but you have money put aside for advertising. Okay, for social okay. advertising using Instagram and Facebook, that's another webinar too. Uh, but if you're just posting on your social media presence, it's only gonna reach people who already follow you. But yeah. social media companies like Facebook and Instagram, they want your money. They want your money. And they're gonna yeah. give you other people's data, other people's information to reach them. So if you think you sound like certain artists, certain rappers, and you appeal to certain people, you can reach those people in a very smart way. You can also reach them in a very dumb way <laughs> and, and have them just take your money and just post like, new track out now. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's not a good way to do it. Facebook would be like, okay, thanks for the money. <laughs> Go ahead, new track out now. But if you use it in a smart way with good video content and it leads back to Spotify, that goes back to your Instagram, that goes back to your website, the funnel. Yeah. Okay. You can get a lot of value out of this. And of course, data. Okay. You got to measure what's working and what's not. Okay. And just to give a final example on that guys real quick, you know, if you go, I'm just going to use the most basic one here, your Spotify for artists stuff, which if you're on Spotify, you have automatic access to this. Um, data is so important guys, because right now, right off the bat, if you look at my music numbers and just look at stuff, you know, my most streamed track is this one. So you might think, Oh, I should focus on this one, but look over here. This track has way more saves, almost triple yeah. the saves. Yeah. And this is the track that everyone is asking for sheet music for. This is the one that people are messaging me on Instagram saying, hey man, I heard this track and I love it, okay? Even though it has less streams, it has more saves. So mm. if I go to a licensing company, if I go to uh, a video person, anything, I'm gonna focus on this one because the data is showing me people respond better to this one. For whatever mm. reason, 
people like this one more. This one gets played more, maybe gets better playlisting, but people yeah. love this one more. I'm going to focus on this one from now on. But notice I had to release all these other singles to get an idea of where this is going. Right now, yeah. this is my lead single for anything I do now at this point yeah. because the data has shown people like this one more. So you can't just look at streams. You got to look at something else. In this case, saves is very, very important for me. So those are the main tools that I recommend. Amazing stuff, man. It's like, <laughs> I'm... I'm, I'm learning a lot. <laughs> Insane. Um, so the next one is, what's your favorite artist marketing campaign that you think we should check out? Oh, okay. Oh, um, I have one in mind, but go ahead. <laughs> oh, you, go, you go for it. No, go for it. Uh, it's actually the one that you did. But I think it's like maybe too long to dive into the Tom Brider thing. Where oh. you did. That's, that was genius. The br brief explanation on that one. Um, <laughs> here, I'll just quickly show it. I mean, to answer your question, there's too many. I mean, you can get really, <laughs> really creative with artist marketing, by the way. But by the way, before I even show you guys anything, um, Abed, I have, I sent the link uh, in the PMX webinar stuff. Um, mm -hmm. There is a company, guys, if you're watching this webinar, you're going to get free access to this uh, called oh. Music Ally. And they are a music knowledge company. They're a marketing uh, company as well. They, they talk about ar artist marketing and music marketing all the time. Okay. Yeah. And they have these things called sandboxes. I even have one over here. So if you subscribe to them and I subscribe to them, they send you these very detailed, almost magazines about marketing, about music marketing. Wow. But uh, if you're an artist that's affiliated with me because they gave me a special code, uh, you get this for free. So Abbott, I will Ooh. resend you the link uh, again. You guys can get this stuff all the time. So to answer this person's question, here's some really amazing music marketing, but also the latest music marketing. Yeah. So don't yeah. take my word for it. Like just go learn from what's happening right now. They interview people all the time who are currently working in the industry who are behind these campaigns. And you nice. cannot help but get inspired by this stuff. That's amazing. So I will send that link to Abbott yeah. again and he can forward it out to everyone uh, as yeah. well. But that's it's um, actually that's that service is not cheap, guys. Like you're getting that for free. That's amazing. It's like it's it's brilliant. That's I think it's a great thousand gift. dollars a year. Yeah, like it's not cheap at all, and it's worth it. <laughs> and now you're getting that for free. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and then just to, what Abbott was talking about. I mean, very, very, very fast. I'm going to blast through this. This is Tom <laughs> Holkenborg, also known as Junkie XL. Uh, he scored. He's a client of mine for many years, and he scored movies like Mad Max: Fury Road, Deadpool, Batman vs Superman. Uh, we are now working. We just announced yesterday Godzilla versus Kong. Uh, we've been working on it for a long time. But we finally <laughs> announced it. Uh, and one thing that he did, he scored the movie uh, Tomb Raider, uh, the one that came out a couple of years ago. Uh, and the whole point of what we did is that since it's a video game movie, I wanted to make the marketing feel like a video game too. So normally he releases his, um, his how he scores the movies as, as videos. But instead mm -hmm. of giving the videos away, we lost the videos in the tombs and i had everyone go uh, so yeah they went missing what happened to our videos uh so then we made a vid a little mini game for people to get started i, I think it still works yeah it still works uh oh. <laughs> so you click the video game thing and you have to do it's very easy so this yeah. is again this is just it's it's supposed to be easy but you're supposed yeah. to like decode the different things yeah and you click that. Oh, you're fast. <laughs> what are you doing here? Oh, wait a second. You must have unlocked the tomb. That's it. You did that. Okay, so while you're here, uh, you might as well listen to this track, which is called Return to Croft Manor. And it's the cue where Lara goes back to the Croft Manor to look for stuff. I hope you like it. All right, and then you click listen to the track, and you can Blah, 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 play the music, yeah. Anyway, yeah. so the whole point is that like, you have to unlock individual songs, and then eventually you unlock the actual, um, the actual making of at a certain point. And then just to mm -hmm. show you people like, again, no composer did this stuff. Not even Hans Zimmer goes this far for his fans. Yeah. So, and his fans loved it. A uh, mm -hmm. lot of good traffic results. Yeah, a lot of people seem to really, really enjoy it. They thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, and it, you know, the studio loved it too. The studio is like, no composer really cares about his score to the point where they make a game for it. You know, like <laughs> we, we pay for that. 
we paid for yeah. that, but you know, yeah. that's, that's one example. That's amazing. I love that. All right. Um, we have, what can a DJ do to get more views for it, etc. As DJs always use copyright issue. Oh, that's interesting. Can't post mixtape. So, what can a DJ do to gain more views, followers, etc. As DJs always face copyrights, uh, copyright issues and can't post mixtapes and videos on SoundCloud or YouTube without being claimed and taken down. Um, yeah, <laughs> we will send it. Okay. Do you okay. have? I mean, just I've worked with DJs for a long time, uh, mostly in the techno space, house mm -hmm. and techno space. Uh, my first artist client was DJ Shadow. That's actually his print back there. So he's more instrumentalist, hip hop, turntablism stuff. Sure. Um, and one thing I, I've always noticed about the primary DJs that I've worked with, um, the, the very successful ones, is you know what? It's really not as much about the DJ mixes, about the tracks they're playing, because anyone mm -hmm. can go to Beatport and download tracks and just start yeah. spinning them. You know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not demeaning the DJ art form. I, I, I can't DJ. You know, it's, it's an art form. But in terms of why people follow certain DJs, it has less to do with them just spinning tracks and more with, again, who they are as an artist, back to their identity. So, yeah. for instance, uh, Richie Hot, a DJ I worked with, was all about Japanese culture, technology, and like Detroit, you know, the 90s techno scene brought into today. Uh, Desert Hearts, they're another, they're an LA based, uh, you know, DJ collective. They're all about uh, house techno and love. They're all about yeah. love and positivity yeah. and unity. They're kind of hippie, hippie techno DJs, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, but it works. People like, I like techno, but what else you got? I like hip hop, but what else you got? Like, mm -hmm. the, I think a challenge for a DJ is to expose that extra layer of who they are as an individual. So um, let's just say, I mean, I don't know what kind of DJ that you are, but let's just say you are a turntablist hip hop DJ, right? And you want to perform more music for more people and showcase why we should follow you. Well, why do we follow DJs? When we're on a dance floor, what I think people don't really realize is that we're effectively trusting the DJ. There is so much music out there and we trust a DJ to be like, I got you. No, 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 no. I'm going to play the good stuff. Trust me. I'm a DJ. So beyond us going like, yeah, nice track, show us why we should trust you. Okay. As a curator. So do you have a record collection? So maybe once a week or what once uh, twice a week you showcase this is the record of the week now or something like that and why that track yeah. means something to you and you maybe you educate us on the history of that record and and your journey yeah. as a crate digger what makes you different as a dj uh do you perform differently maybe you spin tracks maybe you have a little keyboard on the side and you play stuff on top of it. what are you doing differently <laughs> than just playing tracks all the time you know so the barrier to entry and I, i'm saying this with, res with respect but also saying this as an experienced person who's worked with djs for many 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 years the barriers to entry to dj are very low okay maybe get a tractor s4 a couple turntables download yeah. some wave files and you're you watch some youtube videos and, you, and you're done I mean, you, you, you've begun effectively okay so there's yeah. so many other things you gotta be adding to your per per persona, your presence, your presentation as a DJ that's going to make you stand out. Do you DJ only 90s music? Why? How come? Do you DJ stuff, like I said, with, with an instrument? Do you only spin your own stuff? Okay. Yeah. So telling that story of who you are in the context as to why we should trust you as a DJ mm -hmm. curator, I think is very beneficial. At that point, you only got to DJ a couple of times, maybe live stream here and there, but maybe make a Spotify playlist. If you can't yeah. really focus on that, because all that music is clear, make a SoundCloud playlist. Okay, mm -hmm. go on, go on MixCloud where you can post that stuff. You have to, you know, they'll they'll pay the royalty rates and whatnot, but it's a platform just for DJ mixes. Okay, yeah. So do what you can in the barometer, but don't just focus on the music. Otherwise, you're getting like everyone else, every other DJ yeah. that's just playing tracks. Yeah. So it's it's just MixCloud. Actually, it's a great example, and like it's a direct answer to what where you can post your music without getting any copyrights claimed. Um, but I think it's also, as you said, like find your niche and focus on that. Like if your niche is, I don't know, uh, jungle music, 90s jungle music, like focus on that and let your online presence be all around that. Like mm -hmm. when people come to your Facebook or your Instagram, they know what you're about. And if they vibe with that, they will just follow you. Yeah, and don't think what you're trying to do is too small. It's a global yeah. world right now, man. If you, whatever you're doing, I, 
almost anything that you're doing, there's an audience for it. Oh, there's definitely. An audience. There's a big enough there's, audience. <laughs> there's people watching people eating on YouTube and they have millions of streams. Like, come on. <laughs> there's an audience for it, man. There, yeah. there really, really is. And just showcasing other sides of your personality is, is so important to that because it's, again, it's all about context. It, it's, 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 anyone can just play music at this point. Anyone can just DJ music. But like, again, what's the context? Why? Exactly. Why should we care? Why should we trust you? Especially as a DJ. We're trusting yeah. your decisions, right? We're trusting your musical decisions to give us music. Get, show us more why we should trust you. Show us your credentials, if, yeah. if anything, right? Not just like, oh yeah, this is the new hot track on Spotify. Great. But like, what makes you unique in terms of your selection? You know, that's what I would focus on. True. Cool. I think, um, well, thank you. Thank you so much, man. Like, this is knowledge bombs. Um, um, I think we're almost done here. Um, do you have anything to add or if any yeah, of any the other questions? I mean, yeah. I think it's about me talking. I want to answer just real questions that people have. Oh, uh, can Hisham share the schedule template? Yeah, uh, we can. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I, I, he has the link. Abbott has the link. Actually, let me send you another one, Abbott. I just, I updated it and I changed a bunch of stuff. So let me update it and send you a new link. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can um, hit us at PMX and we'll share that with you. That's easy. Um, any more questions? Yeah. Raise your hand. Mm -hmm. now. I'll, I'll take yeah. one more, maybe. Taisir, you're quiet. You didn't say anything. Rafi, it's great seeing you here again, man. Um, can't wait to sit with you again in Ramallah. Um, I know. We were supposed to be um, Ramallah in September, but that's not happening. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Rafiq said, um, I work in digital marketing, but lack the knowledge basic specifics to artist marketing. Can Hisham share some resources? Absolutely. I got you. Okay. So number one is, well, Music Ally. So I'll send the link for that again. So you guys can get that for free. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I mean, look, a lot of the stuff is just from just working, frankly. And I'll admit sometimes I don't have time to read all these resources because I'm just, I'm just doing the work but the first one i always say i always and i check this one all the time no matter what i at least read the articles here is hypebot check mm. this one every day this is the latest in music marketing and music industry news okay, okay. i mean take a look some of it as you can see here is very basic so if you're just starting off very good stuff yeah. uh other sometimes it's just news okay articles sometimes they're case studies right here uh, wow. more important news stuff. It, look, you need to stay like on top of these sort of things. And then a blog like this one is great for it. See how songs go viral on TikTok. If you ever wanted to know, click the video. It's right there. I own a song, sound recording. How do I make money? Again, a lot of it is for, for this audience. Do it yourself, artist professionals at this point. Wow. Here are updates for platforms, Twitter ads, audio tweets. <laughs> they give music mm. examples. Like I could even, I could just stop here, frankly. Like, this is a very great source because it, it dives into so many other websites as well uh, that you can nice. go and do. C guide to creating a great looking DIY home performance video. I mean, perfect, perfect. And as you can see, it all comes from different places. This is from the Banzuga blog, the same people that mm. I was talking about earlier who do the websites. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, it's, a, it's a good rabbit hole because you can go down so many other things here. Good stuff, yeah. Wow. I mean, this is a great one-stop shop. One stop shot right there is Hypebot. Hmm. And I'm you. biased. I used to write for them for many years. So <laughs> actually, I'll, I'll recommend them. Cool. Any other questions? One more question, maybe. Anyone? Uh, oh, we have it here. Google Submit Hub, Music Kelly, good, good. Yeah, I think we're done. Cool. Well, uh, I was going to say again, like I would, I would love to have said in September, we'll see you there. But, um, yeah, Abbott and I had plans to come back for part two. Yeah. Um, but then this whole COVID thing happened. In fact, actually, I don't know if you guys recognize the timing, but Abbott and I were in Palestine during COVID, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, right when it went down, <laughs> we were even joking. Remember we were joking about it. We're like, yeah, we yeah. saw someone drinking Corona. Oh, he has Corona. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and then we go to the airport and people are freaking. And I get home and people are like, you were on an airplane? <laughs> <You know? laughs> so we came home. Yeah, right when all this stuff was happening, man. 
Yeah, that's uh, and crazy. of course it just ruined our plans for September, but you know, we'll be back out there at some point. Yeah, sure. that's, that's so, um, PMX, it's not going to happen in September and it's like, you know, the usual formulas, uh, probably going to do more workshops and panels. We'll see how things, uh, work out, but definitely we'll be back in 2021 with all the showcases and they hopefully after Corona. Um, and after the Corona was, we'll go back to like doing uh, you know workshops over there too so we'll be visiting again yeah cool okay. and if anyone wants to stay in touch with me um i'll just put links in the in the chat section here uh my personal instagram is just that hisham uh if you want to follow my mm -hmm. rizik stuff it's just rizik music uh and if you want to yeah just stay in touch with me those are those are probably the best ways um to do it and i'm always cool. around for conversations and stuff too yeah we'll share those on facebook too uh for our, uh, our facebook viewers cool Thank you so much, man. Uh, thank course, you for waking pleasure. up so early to do that. I'm uh, already up early anyway. It's not a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, problem. So, yeah, I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Of course. All right, guys. Well, good luck to you and enjoy the weekend. You too. Take care, See bro. Bye-bye.